In this demonstration, you'll see an example of how to create conformal CHT meshes with periodic boundary conditions on a generic CAN combustor geometry using ANSYS meshing tools. CHT meshes are useful when strong thermal interaction between fluid and solids leads to conjugate heat transfer conditions. Having conformal meshes that share nodes on the fluid-solid interfaces can be important to obtain the most accurate simulation results. This is a section of a CAN combustor. To accurately model the conjugate heat transfer between the fluid and the solid regions, I will generate conformal meshes at the fluid-solid interfaces. I've already defined a material point, extracted the flow volume, specified the size functions using the scoped sizing controls, and defined the global periodicity for my model by specifying the periodicity parameters. I've also generated a shrink-wrapped mesh on the fluid-solid boundaries. The fluid face zone labels inherited the names of the underlying solid geometry. I'll start with recovering the solids from the flow volume. Solids that are fully enclosed in the fluid domain are completely defined and will be recovered automatically. Those not fully enclosed need to have all open sides capped before the solids can be recovered. In this case, I need to close regions associated with OD liner, ID liner, and heat shield. I'll select the flow volume object and set it as the target. All the cap face zones that I'll create will be added to the target object. I want the capping surfaces to be meshed on creation so I'll open the Control dialog box and select the Remesh option. The first volumetric region that I'll cap is for the Combustor OD liner. The easiest way to create a cap is to use the Loop Selection tool. I'll click a few nodes along the boundary of the zone that I want to cap and use the Zone Boundary Path tool. This way I can easily trace the path for the capping phase zone. After I've selected the nodes, I'll close the loop and create a capping surface with the loop as the boundary. I need to add the newly created capping surface to the existing face zone label, OD Liner, so I'll enter OD Liner for the cap label. The new surface is meshed automatically because of the remesh option selected earlier. To visualize multi-connected conformal faces, I'll select the multi-face option. At the fluid solid interface, the yellow colored faces are connected to the edges that share more than two faces. I can see that the cap shares nodes with the flow volume. I'll continue with closing all of the openings for the OD liner by creating caps and placing them under the same label OD liner. If you make an error while selecting the loop nodes, you can press the Escape key to deselect the last selected node and the F2 key to cancel all selections. Now that I've capped the OD liner openings, I need to create a separating face zone for the side where the heat shield connects to the OD liner. I'll draw the OD liner, create a cap surface, and add it to the OD liner face zone label. The OD liner region is now bounded from all sides. I'll use the same procedure for closing the volumetric regions for the ID liner and the heat shield, adding the new cap zones to the existing mesh face zone labels ID liner and heat shield, respectively. I'll skip ahead in this process. Now that I've created the caps that bound the solid regions, I can extract the solids from the flow volume. In the tree, I'll right-click Volumetric Regions and select Compute from the Context Sensitive menu. I'll select the Fluid Material point and click OK. Once the computation is complete, the names of the solids that have been automatically extracted appear in the tree under Volumetric Regions. The new regions have inherited their names from the existing mesh face zone labels. It is always a good idea to review the names of the volumetric regions and confirm that all solids have been extracted correctly. If the expected solid volume regions are not listed under volumetric regions, you can use the Diagnostic Tools dialog box for stitching the surfaces that have free faces. Lastly, I'll recover the periodicity for both fluid and solid meshes. I'll open the Make Periodic Boundaries dialog box. I can see that it's automatically populated with the periodicity settings that I specified globally earlier. I'll select all the master zones and click Recover to apply the periodicity settings to the shadow face zone. I'll use the Manage Face Zones dialog box to display the periodic face zones. The two periodic boundaries are identical and therefore conformal for both fluid and solid meshes. Now the fluid and solid domains are ready for a volume meshing operation, which can be performed using prism meshes on the fluid and solid sides. This concludes this demonstration on creating conformal CHT surface meshes.